Hey, welcome back to EMC World. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World, three days of live coverage. We're in day three. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We love talking to the entrepreneurs, the executives, uh, anyone who has the signal, and we're going to share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Bill Cook is here. He's the Chief Operating Officer of Pivotal. And Bill, welcome back to theCUBE, good friend of theCUBE, great good to see morning. you. Good morning, good to see you guys. Yeah, so um, obviously, you know, huge news down in uh, New York when you guys announced what Pivotal was. Um, got a lot of action here at the show, but um, tell us, you know, how's it feel? What's the reaction been to the customers, you know, seeing this new initiative? Yeah, it's been great, and uh, thanks for having us here. As you know, you guys have been terrific supporter of ours from the Green Plum days Absolutely. when we came and <laughs> talked about Green Plum and what we were up to. And as you guys recall, even back then, we had pretty big ambitions about what this market opportunity could be. And you know, it wasn't just around about big data. I think we talked about that. It was about analytics, but it was also about turning data and analytics into something that you know, is customer facing and in the moment and driving business value and outcomes. And I think the journey we've been on over the last year around Pivotal and the announcement of Pivotal has been the culmination of really that vision, right? Around how companies, businesses, partners, we're going to start to leverage data in different ways. And Pivotal has really set off to, to provide that capability to our, to our customers, that they have a platform that they can write to and depend on for this next generation of applications that are going to get built. And as you've said, the re I think the reception we've received on the story and the vision has been terrific. Okay. So uh, Bill, we're we've pretty excited. We've been following you guys, obviously, since the days. You guys have been you know, great supporters of theCUBE. You helped underwrite some of our early work at Strata, uh, and we really appreciate that. And, and Hadoop World, when it was an independent show with Cloudera, you guys have been great, so I want to thank you for that. We've also been watching EMC World, and EMC World 2010, I, I believe uh, uh, you might have been on there. We, we saw the vision, Paul Moritz laying out the stack, yeah, internet operating system, I called it. Right. Um, Pat was uh, just getting into, into EMC. Right. And it was, it was a natural, great story. But the market's changed a lot since then. And, and we've been talking at, uh, uh, on this show here about making comparisons to the old inflection points of, of as Joe Tucci calls it, wave two or era two with client server and uh, TCP IP and the, how the stack was hardened. Below TCP IP was, was hardened and that, that expanded huge growth and the old OSI model, you remember from your Sundays, you know, at the top of the stack just was always in flux, but that was a good thing. Right. So to me, we're kind of making the comparison like the pivotal is like taking the original vision of, of Paul Moritz and Pat Gelsinger and the team and putting it out separately, decoupling it, hardening the lower end of the stack, right. if you will, With in this pass modern offering. era, right. pass, et cetera, right. data layer, all that stuff, and then allowing you guys to accelerate and be highly cohesive in this modern app world. Yep. Is that a, would that be a clear kind of like oversimplification of it? I think it's perfect. I think so, you got it. <laughs> so, so with that, Green Plum is a nice little nugget in that equation because you guys had revenue. You were, you know, when you were on your own prior to the acquisition, you were competing against some pretty large data management players. Sure. Um, okay, so now that you have all this cobbled together, you have re built-in revenue. What's happening? What's, what's orbiting around the Green Plum? Because Green Plum and Gemfire seem to be the, a key part of the acquisition. What's, what's orbiting around that and what's, what's going to consolidate and stick together? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, uh, the one thing we've done, and you guys watched us do this, is really commit to a Hadoop HDFS-based stack, right? Take advantage of the optimizer that we had built over the last 10 years, i.e. Hawk, that we introduced in February and leverage off of a, of a common file system, HDFS. And we think getting to a, a common you know, data tier, data, data fabric, if you will, is really going to be important, right? Because what, what, what our customers are telling us is getting to a shared infrastructure for their data that they can start to build different solutions and use cases on top of 
is kind of the next step for them. And it's early, right? And I think Hadoop has been early, right? In, in, in part of that, that underpinning. But we think it's an important step in, in, the, in the right direction so customers can get to that, that level of, of clarity, if you will, of having data in one spot that they can start to, that they can start, start to leverage. And so what we've done with Greenplum is really build that stack and our you know, Pivotal HD distribution. We're doing the same thing with Gemfire and SQL Fire. How do we get that onto a common substrate data fabric, if you will? And so what it means to our customers is you have a broader case of, uh, broader opportunity of use cases that can leverage that stack. Now on top of that, now we're building off of the application fabric as well. So the assets that we've inherited with the Spring community and the vFabric community of layering into an integrated stack from a data fabric and application fabric perspective, and then building all of that on top of a common substrate being the, the PaaS offering that we've inherited from the, from the work that had gone on at VMware and Cloud Foundry. So the story has gotten much more compelling, much broader in handling different use cases that I think are... And there's differentiation, so Greenplum's not the sole, you know, sole piece anymore. No, it's an element. Now you can continue to buy Greenplum and we continue to encourage yeah. that, we'll continue to support that for those specific use cases, just like Hadoop has specific use cases, just like Gemfire and SQL Fire have uh, specific use cases. I think what's different now is on top of that you have a vision of how it all integrates together. And I think that's the story that I think customers have been looking for, right? I, I think from, you know, if you look from the standard uh, CIO's perspective, they've got a, a, a deluge of opportunities <laughs> and issues facing them about how do they keep the lights on running the you know, tier two infrastructure, or wave two infrastructure, and think about this next generation of platforms. Keep that the need lights to be on on the wave two. Yes. And build wave three, yeah. as Joe says. And it's, it's hard. I mean, yeah. we, we, we try to be obviously very respectful of that yeah. and build those connection points so it's not this big bang theory, like do I have to throw out everything I've done over the last 10 years? Obviously not, that never happens. And so how do we make that evolution as seamless and as painless as possible for our customers? And I think what, what people like about us is that we have you know, a bit of a track record of being innovated and trusted on the technology side, but then with the backing of both EMC and VMware and now General Electric as being a member of the family, believing in it, investing in us, and encouraging the, the transformation that's going on. I, I want to talk about GE in, sure. in some depth, but uh, before we go there, you talked about this common data tier, and when I listened to the, the Viper announcement, I said, wow, that kind of looks like a common data tier. How did you guys decide where to draw the line as to wh what assets go where? Uh, from uh, EMC, yeah, VMware. Right. I mean, like I say, Viper looks like a common data tier. I could yeah. say, they're, they're yeah. talking HDFS, an object yeah. store, and I said, well, why couldn't that be part of Pivotal too? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking to Paul and Scott about this, that you know, we've come a long way <laughs> in a year and a half. I mean, when we first showed up, you know, when we were still uh, green plum and to on, Cloud Era. on the Hadoop, <laughs> you know, <laughs> path, uh, and talking about the bat and the commitment we were making to yeah. Hadoop community and HDFS specifically, uh, I, I think a lot of the EMC people didn't know what that was, right, in the early days, right? It was right, what's a, Hadoop? What's Hadoop <laughs> and why would we be doing this? We just bought Green Plum and what does all this mean? And now when you see Pat up on stage talking about the VMware direction and their commitment to virtualized Hadoop, and to your point, you hear the EMC story with Hadoop as a prominent position in the strategy, uh, I think we've come a long way. And so, more work to do on leveraging the different types of storage. And I think that, to answer your question, EMC comes at it, obviously, from a storage footprint, kind of up the stack with Viper, thinking about the control plane uh, of how they leverage storage capability. Uh, we would want to seamlessly tie into that. We would view that as infrastructure underneath our platform Brothers as a service. Brothers in arms. <laughs> Brothers in arms, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to be. and and. You know, not to to knock my my brothers and parents, but also be open about it, mm -hmm. right? We have to play across the market, across the tiers of different vendors, and be very open and open source based yeah, in mean, our well, technology. I mean, one of the things that we hear from customers all the time at Wikibon, we have the peer insights, talk to CIOs, and you know they want integration. I think that integration message you just said is really kind of key. Having these point solutions on use cases is great. You can develop the market there, and you can go vertical. So right. vertical's key, so you can get beachhead and expand, but ultimately, holistically, the integration 
distinction is key. Uh, but with that, uh, because of its orientation, OpenStack has really, really resonated with enterprises. Right. Uh, mainly for two reasons as we were analyzing. One, AWS, Amazon Web Services, is coming down the tracks like a freight train, full throttle, right to the enterprise. Yeah. Clean stack, very efficient, a lot of shadow IT. <coughs> enterprises are seeing it, some are using it aggressively, some are want that functionality. So OpenStack is appealing to enterprises as a security blanket, a potential bridge, not yet fully capable. So it's basically Amazon. They want Amazon, so OpenStack's got that, got that messaging. A clear run, I mean, they got a clear run right now, an uncontested uh, marketing lead in terms of the mind share of enterprises. How are you guys going to get back in that game there? Obviously, you're involved with OpenStack, we know that. Right. So James Waters out there, friend right. of theCUBE, and, right. and so we know you're contributing code, but you know, there's a balance there, a balancing act between, hey, we want to get a position, because right. you guys are basically offering a comprehensive, integrated solution that you can support. Yep. So, how are you going to balance the freight train of Amazon <laughs> with the developing of great messaging of OpenStack? Well, I mean, as James probably explained, we, I mean, we need to stay up a layer, if you will, right? So our PaaS offering needs to fit into an OpenStack framework, into a VMware framework, into an Amazon framework, and the whole idea of our objective is to give the application developers and developers kind of independence and be able to count on choice and options about how they want to deploy the technology and not, not really have to worry about that. Make that a non-architectural discussion, right? And so insulate the developers from that world that want to develop for this new world, leverage these new data fabrics that we were just talking about, but then have independence of the underlying infrastructure and where it gets run, right? Yeah, yeah, Whether they yeah. want to run in a more hosted environment or behind their own firewall, it should be the same technology stack, yeah. and that's really the mission we're on right. to really so, prove so that out. So let's riff on that. So Dave and I were just talking with Jeremy Berg, we brought this up with Gelsinger and others, is that back in the 80s and 90s, you remember during those box days, you know, data center days, multi-vendor was the big discussion. If you weren't multi-vendor, that was table stakes, that was a minimum requirement, I had to work with different vendors, but that was kind of a box, speeds and feeds, ports, et cetera. Um, so what you're basically saying, and what we're teasing out in theCUBE this week, is that the new multi-vendor is the frameworks, because what you just said is, in essence, you're contributing to open source by contributing code. Right. So you're playing with these open source communities and frameworks. At the same time, you guys have some proprietary technology. You're going to have hardened underneath the covers. Absolutely. So, so is the open source frameworks the new multi-vendor? I think it is. I mean, I, I think you have to, I think the customers, you know, are, 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 are and the community more broadly is going to require it, right? They, they just don't want to end up down a path locked in to a particular vendor a particular hoster, and they, they feel, and I think the other thing that's helping in this mission is that, you know, the technology adoption for this new world, and the way a Google or a Facebook would, would, uh, would tackle a problem like this from an application development perspective, they have to have that agility, right? They, gotta, they have to be able to take their business and their applications where they, where they want to go, and not feel locked in, and not feel constrained. And I think we've learned a lot over the last 30 years about what that means. And so we're going to try to be a very good citizen of that, like contributing back to the open source community, also providing value add on, on top of that. That is our differentiator, right? That, that's got to hold the test of time. It's got to bring value to the enterprise to, to pay for those things, but not, not feel locked in. And so we've been very careful about, you know, when we talk about the data tier, when we talk about the application tier, when we talk about the PaaS tier, that all of those are, are independent of each other. We will build it as a holistic solution, but if you just want yeah. pieces of it, that's fine. So I got to ask you a question about yeah. the business side. Obviously, the, the new startup is awesome, and great feedback. People are really excited, the employees, like well, over 1,200 employees, right. and uh, throw over 300 in revenue. How does that revenue get reintegrated? Because obviously, you know, we can speculate where the revenue came from, um, <laughs> Green Plum and some other places, um, but not everyone was throwing off a lot of revenue. You had Cetus and Spring, those were sure. honestly somewhat maybe revenue driven, but you know, the bulk of that revenue is going to come from sources. How do you guys, how are you going to rein that in so that it's cohesive where you can actually put it into a, a central pool and, and how do you reintegrate into the, into the holistic offering? So, you know, so all of those pieces fit into Pivotal One and that story, I mean, that's what we're aimed at for the end of the year. So from a revenue perspective, I mean, we're a software company in our core, right? That's what Pivotal One is. We will wrap services around that. We have a professional services team. We have a data science team, as you guys know. 
but you know, longer term, our, our strategy, as you know, is to leverage the broader ecosystem, right? I, I don't want to create a IBM Global Services, per se, yeah. and right? And Maritz was just in the analyst meeting, I'm watching on Twitter, obviously amplifying the channel partner strategy. Yeah, I mean, we have to. to. I mean, we have to, if we're going to play that game of being very open and transparent, it has to be a platform that attracts the best and brightest application developers and the new software uh, solutions that are going to be built for this next generation. And so we have to be that platform of choice. And so how do we enable that, that world to evolve? We will, there, there is more than enough growth in this market, as you know. Yeah. This is a huge <laughs> wave that we're you know, being very ambitious about building the platform for. And so this will be more about market adoption, candidly, yeah. for us, because we, we think if we are a good citizen, a good provider of capability here, uh, uh, you know, the revenue will come. Let me ask you, just to clarify for the audience, yeah. that, that revenue will be recognized uh, at, at EMC, yeah, right? EMC's got, I think, about 70% ownership. VMware had 30% prior to the GE investment. So yeah, it's I mean, part of the EMC's P and L. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we are like VMware was. Yeah, like VMware was. We're we're owned by yeah. EMC majority, and VMware and GE took a ten percent stake in us, and so it will be pivotal revenue, but it will get consolidated. At yeah. the, and then Tucci said at the financial analyst conference, look, the intent is we want to execute and go IPO. That's why we're doing this. That's and, right. And you know, we have so, a lot of work to do between. And and that's an important point. I mean, obviously, we want to grow this into a bigger company, be able to spin it out uh, publicly as we've, as we've stated. And you know, besides the obvious reasons we want to do that, of it being a, a major platform for our customers, it's also the way we are able to attract Absolutely. the best talent, yeah. right? The people that feel like, boy, that's a great ambition as a company. It's something I want to be a part of and I have some upside, right, from an equity perspective to be part of that ride and part of that journey. Now it's a lot of hard work as well, so I don't yeah. want to minimize uh, <laughs> uh, the challenges in front of us, but those are the right challenges you want to have, which are about execution and driving real value out in the Bill, let me ask you a personal question. Sure. Because uh, you've, you've had a, a long story career. You've, you're you've telling been me in, I'm old? You've been in the, well, we're all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you worked at some, you've, you've seen the, the errors, right? Yep. Your error too was there. You had a career there. Yep. But with the Green Plum and, the, and through the acquisition, you've seen the trials and tribulations of you know, the growth of the big data space, right? and as well as you putting your fingers in other kind of data management spaces kind of on the legacy side. Sure. Um, and now you're part of this new, 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 new pivotal one. Right. What are you most excited Excited about looking back, and I mean, um, you know, you're in a new comfort zone or, or uncomfort zone. <laughs> you're pushing yourselves. You guys got a, a great and re-energized vibe. We're seeing that. What are you personally most excited about about this new journey? Well, I, I think for me, you know, personally, to the point you made, uh, it's really about the mission. I mean, when you look back on your career, uh, you know, I had a terrific time at Sun. Still, you know, very fond memories of Sun and what we accomplished, and. If you talk to any of the people that came out of Sun, it was all about the mission and the excitement about really making a difference, right, in, in the world. And with the technology platform and just feeling part of that momentum, that you're doing something meaningful and it will make a difference with your customers and your partners and your employees, just that shared experience of accomplishing something. And I think Pivotal has that same opportunity, if not bigger. And great leadership in, Mer in Paul Moritz. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm obviously blessed to be part of the leadership team here and have a guy of Paul Moritz's caliber and Scott Yara's caliber sitting side by side helping drive our vision and our strategy. You know, I would argue, you know, two of the top technologists yeah. in the world. And, and your so, operator, so you got the three trifecta there going on. I, th I think so. I think we're very complimentary in skills and then Rob Me as well as, uh, you know, the founder and CEO of Pivotal Labs and what he's brought to the table around agile development and taking over uh, the Cloud Foundry effort, and uh, it's just it's just a special time, it's a special place, and you know, we take that responsibility seriously, that we've got this opportunity, we want to execute against it, and it, at the end of the day, it's about attracting and retaining great people yeah. that want to be part of that mission. And one of the cool injections into your mission, outside of the coolness of Cloud Foundry, Green Plum, and doing all the stuff that's, you know, that us geeks get all excited about and in the space that we're in, is the injection of the GE investment, which brings a really mainstream, new, global effort to the Internet of Things, right? So, right. so that is just a major boost. So let's boost. talk about that a little bit. So sure. when, when you guys announced Pivotal, you saw it like, with Greenplum, we got Cetus, we got uh, cloud, this Cloud Foundry piece, and all these misfit toys, I call them, inside, Come of, on v now. inside of VMware <laughs> and, and EMC. And it was, even Pat said, he didn't call them, he didn't like when I called it misfit toys. <laughs> yeah, but, I hope not. But, but, 
But he did say, I didn't have enough time to pay yeah. attention to these sort of outliers. Yeah. You know, Pivotal Labs, okay, great. Now you put them all sort of together. Okay, right. great, that's good. Wall Street loved it, because right. you stripped out a bunch of expense, you gave this sort of <laughs> IPO vision, right. beautiful. Um, but still, it, it, we said, okay, but what's the differentiation? And you know, you put up charts on Hawk and how it's faster than Impala, and you go, uh, okay, that's cool. And then all of a sudden, bang, GE makes this investment. Sure. And you start to think about, wow, is this the next wave? of big data, this internet of things, they right. call it the industrial internet. So talk about that a little bit and what you have to do to make that a reality. Yeah, I, I think um, to your point, um, you know, people did think about it as you know, different technologies and people coming together. I mean, I, certainly part of that's true, but I, I, I do believe that you know, this is not just a rationalization of those pieces. Sure, I right. mean, we really believe that you have to have that holistic platform to kind of pull this off, right? To, you have to solve the bigger problem here from an applica how applications sure. get built and deployed. And so covering all those pieces are necessary. And the fact we had assets in those areas and people that had expertise in doing this before was really critical. I think the exciting part for me around GE was that it was a very um, natural evolution. Meaning we were talking to Bill Rue and the team when we were Green Plum about data and analytics and the things we could do. They were also talking with VMware, right, around the VMware assets and how that would leverage into the portfolio. And it was a very natural discussion that led to the announcement that happened in April of GE making the investment. Because if you think about it, their expertise is really around understanding their businesses, understanding their industries, understanding what they want to do with technology, and, and why should they have to build that whole end-to-end -end stack themselves. I mean, that was the conclusion that Bill and the team came to. And it just, you know, some of these things just happen at the right time. The fact that Pivotal was being formed that had a big, bold vision and ambition about what we were going to build that mapped perfectly to what Bill, Rue, and the GE leadership team felt was necessary for them to realize their vision. And then it's just a matter of getting together. Are we aligned culturally? Right. Are we aligned at the leadership level? And, and that happened very quickly, right? Them deciding, yes, strategically we're aligned, culturally we're aligned, and then it was just a matter of putting the financials together to get them Kind of well, and they the launched their software development lab in what, the end of 2011, and, and I, my sense is they saw, in talking to them and, and others, wow, there's a lot of stuff that we have to build out exactly. that has taken us off our main focus, which is you know, improving the world and you know, yeah, the whole, yeah, what they yeah, call exactly. the industry internet. Exactly. So, uh, we thought, you know what we thought of the announcement, we, we you know, were very positive on it, but Specifically, what do you guys now have to do to make that vision a reality? A lot yeah, of so the, the steps now, now that we've you know, kind of formed the partnership, mm -hmm. if you will, and they're an investor, is really lay out the specifics of the points of intersection and the use cases. So we're talking to Bill and his team about you know, what areas do they want to tackle first, right? Obviously, we need to get alignment on the architecture. I think that will happen fairly quickly uh, and is happening now but it's going to be what are those first use cases that we're going to go build with the GE divisions that actually derive business value for them. I mean, that's going to be an important element of success here over the next, you know, uh, let's call it three quarters, right? And then build on top of that once we get that use case built. Yeah, so despite the fact that they have a clear financial incentive to standardize on Pivotal, you got to earn the right to do that. So Absolutely. you got to go use case by UK, use case and get Absolutely. some wins in the marketplace. Absolutely, and, that, and that's the way it should be, yeah, right? I mean, I, I think when you, when you try to impose something from the top and you declare this is Failure. the solution, right? Yeah. It's, it's fraught with danger, right? Because human nature is to push back and say, boy, that's not going to help me and my respective businesses. Now, I will tell you, I've, I've had a few meetings with some of the, with the, some of the GE divisions around, uh, you know, how do they think about this, right? Just step back and say, you know, how do you think about this centralized group helping you, right? And, they, I was uh, pleasantly surprised at how welcoming and uh, receptive they were to not only you know, Bill Rue and his team, but Pivotal being part of that. Because at the end of the day, they, they did feel like they are, they are missing the elements that they need to have in this data platform and the application tier. It's been holding back their business. And so if they can spec from a business requirements perspective what's required to go compete and win, and they have a trusted partner that they can count on between Bill's team and our team as an integrated plan, they were, they were very encouraging by it. So that, that was encouraging to do, me. Do you think this is the next big wave of big data applications or is it a little too far off to say at this point? 
I, I, I don't think there's any question it's the next big wave. I, I think there's no, I mean, it just makes intuitive sense. Yeah, right, everybody's talking about making Hadoop more enterprise ready. That's kind of yeah. nice. That's, but I, I would view that more of a feature. <laughs> see how it drives business value. This yeah, is enormous I mean, I, business value I, that we're talking about. Yeah, here. I mean, I, you just think about the world. I mean, you go from healthcare to telco to retail to financial to government. I mean, instrumenting every, industries. I instrumenting mean. industries and how people think about data and putting it to work kind of in context of the moment. Uh, that's going to happen. I, I think the, there's no question in my mind that is the wave that we're all going to be a part of. I, I think the question is how and who <laughs> and when, you yeah. know, all the normal stuff. The why you, is <laughs> clear. <laughs> the why is clear. Yeah. And, you know, certainly there's obstacles we need to get over, things like privacy and security and getting that balance mm -hmm. right as you leverage data in, these, in this new world. But, you know, I'm confident we will work through that and get the right, right balance and technology will help with that story. Now I think of, I've seen, you know, you see IBM Smarter Planet, great ads, you know, great vision. Uh, but they were sort of the lone wolf. It's like you know the old saying: if there's one lawyer in town, he goes broke. If there's two lawyers in town, <laughs> they both get rich. Right. And and now you've got two you know giant conglomerates kind of pushing that that messaging. Uh, it's very exciting times. Yeah. Well, so my part. final question, real sure. quick, because you get to get the last word in. Your top, top key metrics, because you're the chief operating officer, you got to you know steer the ship and you know play DJ and orchestrate across and, sure. and get this integration done. Or, or, integration, I guess, done. Yeah. Um, what are your key metrics for the year? You know, when you look back next year and uh, when we talk or, or when we see you at, v, at VMworld, um, what are the metrics you want to point to and say, hey, this is what I top, my top goals are? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things. I, obviously on the product side, Pivotal One coming to reality, right? So showing kind of, it's, it's the prove to the world that that integrated stack does exist and, and does provide value. We will do that this year. Uh, the second one for me that goes hand in hand with that is really customer adoption, customer and partner adoption of use cases. Not, and, 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 and obviously we need to make our business plan and revenue and all the normal financial metrics that are important, but to me, you know, this is a momentum story, right? I think you want to get in front of that momentum to show the industry what's possible. And so having customers and references across the different industry segments saying, yep, I bet on that technology stack, I bet on Pivotal, and here was my outcome. That's going to be the big story in the next point. 12 to 18 months, and then we will be you know, essentially on our way. Well, Bill, you didn't disappoint. You know, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm not Paul. <laughs> but Paul Moritz will be on soon. Um, not today, but uh, he had to fly his plane back to Seattle. Um, uh, Bill Cook, the Chief Operating Officer from Pivotal, Congratulations on the, on the success and the and excitement and the re-energy and the cohesiveness of this new organization. We're going to be looking forward to tracking you. Of course, uh, Analyst Day at VMworld, a bunch of other stuff, Outreach, Richard Snee uh, and, and all the team over there, James Waters. Great, great group of guys and we're looking forward to it. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and try to steal them from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. Exclusive coverage from EMC World in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after a short break. Thanks guys.